Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got a really fun match for you here, going up against a super scary team. And as always, if you are new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, and it only takes you a second, so you might as well. And let's get ourselves into the match. All right, so my opponent is going to lead off with the Monkey Dory, as I decide to toss out the Infernape. We got a couple of monkeys just monkeying around out here, and I figure I could probably just go for a nice little U-turn, grab a pivot, and go ahead and assess the situation from there, as this thing does hit pretty hard. I don't have a lot of answers to it, but I know that Infernape won't be able to take this thing out, and I do need this for later. So I go for the U-turn, and it turns out this thing actually outspeeds me and straight up just kills my ass with a sidekick. And as it turns out, they got a straight up Choice Scarf Monkey Dory lead. And now I'm down in Fernape right from the start. So that is what we like to call in the business not very good. And I kind of just have to play behind five to six. So what I'm going to do is I bring in the fortress knowing that this thing can't really hit me that hard. Being locked into psychic, I can then essentially just get up my hazards for free. And I'm going to go for that stealth rock. So they do end up switching out the monkey dory. And that thing being scarfed could potentially be a problem for later. But they decide to go into the heatran, of course, the arch nemesis. Of my fortress, of course, but I do get up my stealth rock, and that should be pretty helpful trying to limit switches later on. So now I'm thinking, okay, he likely just is gonna set up stealth rock of his own. While it is scary staying in here, fearing the fire attack, I truly don't have that much to switch in here. So what I'm gonna do is instead, knowing I'm gonna go second, go for the volt switch. As I do predict correctly, he does go for the stealth rock. Uh, the obvious play was to go for the fire move, but this allows me to now get a volt switch, and finally I can try to get up a little bit of a uh, little bit of momentum on my side. So I do have some answers to the Heatran, mostly in the form of this booger dog. And that is gonna be the Okie Dogie. This thing is an absolute beast. And looking at the team, I actually have a pretty good opportunity to try to set this thing up and see what I can make happen. So, uh, bringing this against the Heatran sets up an obvious opportunity for me to go for something like the Drain Punch. However, of course I do know they have a ghost type on their team in the form of the Basque Legion. So, after eating a little bit of Black Sludge, snacking on some Sludge, I'm gonna go instead for the knockoff. Not expecting this thing to stay in, I'm gonna see if I can catch the Basque Legion. And to my surprise, they do actually end up switching directly into this deadass fish, who is gonna actually be like extra dead after this uh, this knockoff. So I'm actually max attack, max HP, and that is definitely gonna take care of the Basque Legion. And that's a very scary sweeper out of the way. So that thing being gone is amazing, and Okidogi's able to grab his first KO of the game. And we're actually positioned pretty damn well. You know what we're not positioned well against though? is this damn monkey. We're supposed to be homies in the game, but today we are certainly enemies, and I do not really have a lot that wants to switch into this thing. So I just decided to go into Fortress. It's kind of my weakest link at this point. They do have the Heatran for a direct counter to it, and I've got my Stealth Rock up, so I'm feeling pretty good here. I also know that this thing likely can't two-hit Kaomi, uh, so bringing this thing in is pretty solid. They do end up going for that Psychic once again. You cannot Toxic Chain me because I am Steel Boy, and uh, we're looking like we're in a pretty safe spot here. So. I don't imagine they end up staying in on this thing, but then I also realize I can't hit this thing that hard in return either. So instead I just go for the Volt Switch over the Gyro Ball, and he does just stay in and go for the Psychic. It's kind of a good play, considering there wasn't much of a threat on the Fortress end, so... The Volt Switch allows me to go into whatever I want. And while the Ambipom looks pretty nice, I end up going into the Vicavolt. Ambipom basically just draws in the Heatran and puts me in a worse spot, so my plan is... Essentially to try to get this thing to attack with a Psychic, knowing I can take at least one, I can finish off this Monkey Dory with a Thunderbolt. So I'm willing to basically trade Vicavolt for this Monkey Dory. The main reason is because once Monkey Dory is gone, Okie Doki is actually set up extremely well and in a position to try to get a little sweep going. So I finish off the Monkey Dory with the, uh, the Thunderbolt there as it did hit me with the Psychic, which I am able to live. And now Vicavolt's slow ass just basically has to handle whatever as they decide to go into the Iron Hands. And I don't really want to direct switch into anything here. I'm just going to stay in. I am choice specs. I just click that Thunderbolt as the Iron Hands is able to outspeed me with his fat ass and finish me off with a nice punch. But Vicavolt did exactly what I needed to do. Like I mentioned, taking care of the monkey. So now we get a free switch and I decide to go right back into Booger Dog. Now this thing is positioned great against Iron Hands, especially if I can grab myself a bulk up. The idea behind this thing is to be extremely bulky while bulking up and then heal yourself back with drain punches and just overall be annoying to take care of if you've kind of rid them of a uh, strong special attacker. So I go for that bulk up here as Iron Hands just goes right for the Thunder Punch and I am able to eat that shit up like a bowl of shocking fruity pebbles in the morning and we're feeling pretty good at this point. I've got the plus one attack and defense and uh, with the drain punch recovery, I have basically a good answer to the Heatran. Iron Hands doesn't have much for me 
and we're in a pretty good spot. So they are going to end up switching out the Iron Hands. That is actually a pretty annoying Pokemon going forward. But they decide to switch into the Heatran thinking they can catch me potentially going for a poison move like the Gunk Shot. And they can outspeed and hit me hard with like an Earth Power. Unfortunately for them, I punched their Lava Frog right in the face, and that does knock that thing out, of course, while also bringing me back to full HP. So I guess the idea was them being able to keep Iron Hands would have been huge in the late game. Uh, so if they would have gotten that prediction correct, had I gone for a Gunk Shot, it would have been a completely different position. But back comes the Iron Hands, and back at full health, and with that defense boost, I'm free to basically just go for the Gunk Shot now that Heatran is gone. However, of course, I miss. And how do you miss this bitch's big-ass palms, I swear? The bigger the Pokemon, that better low accuracy move should work against them. Game Freak, please hire me. Anyway, uh, they can't really do too much to me here, as I'm essentially just free to just throw some gunk. Anybody remember when Gunk Shot's animation used to be a trash can? That was the best thing ever. Throw a trash can at this man's face, and down goes the Iron Hands, and I recover some more. And all they have left is going to be some physical attackers where Okie Doki has a great answer to. So, they decide to go into the Mandibuzz here. And uh, while this thing is pretty bulky, it's actually not going to be able to kind of win this matchup. So I'm going to go for the Drain Punch. However, they actually just end up canceling the battle as their last two Pokemon aren't going to be able to do much against the Okie Doki. But luckily enough for us, we have technology and we can see how this battle would have played out in the form of amazing drawings. So like I said, Mandibuzz can likely take an attack like the Gunk Shot, no problem, but it does do over half. Whereas they then fire off a foul play at me and that does not do much. So then the next turn, I'm able to basically just knock him out with a Drain Punch, grab some health back, and all that leaves left is going to be the Weavile, who is quick, but he can basically just go for the Icicle Crash as I live that with my defense boost, and then Drain Punch his ass into the Oblivion, and that's going to be how it finishes it off. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the amazing drawings. I will be auctioning these off starting at $1 million per slide. I will be taking offers through the comments. Thank you.